A new economic plan last Friday, accompanied by, for some reason, a video where stirring music almost managed to disguise an utter lack of content. What this is about is about making sure that the United Kingdom is a successful economy where we're getting more jobs, more investment. This is a fantastic country with huge reserves of talent, energy and enterprise. And what this is all about is unleashing those talents, that energy, for the betterment of our country. OK, first, choose a camera, Liz. <laughs> You've got two there and you're looking at neither of them. Second, that music sounds like it's come from generically inspiring violin for bullshit political ads and commercials for hospitals, volume two. And finally, unleashing talent and energy is completely meaningless, unless, that is, you're a youth track coach that's finally decided to give the team steroids. <laughs> now, Truss's plan controversially entails massive tax cuts, mostly to the wealthy, on the assumption that it'll eventually boost the economy for everyone. It's basically trickle-down economics bullshit yet again, and it's something that Truss's allies desperately tried to justify, with one arguing that a rising tide lifts all ships, and saying this... If you look at the proposals according to the Resolution Foundation, if you're on a million pounds, you're getting a tax cut of £55,000. I mean, that is quite clearly uh, tax cuts that are weighted at the top end of the yeah, scale. Yeah, but so if all you care about is the distributional impact of the tax cuts in the next 24 weeks, you're not going to like this package if you care more about the poor. Wow! <laughs> if you care more about the poor, then you're not going to like this package. That sounds less like someone defending an economic plan and more like Jeff Bezos describing his penis. Because, in general, it's not great to describe a government policy the same way you describe legacy college admissions or a Ronald Reagan duvet cover. Right after those tax cuts were announced, UK financial markets were plunged into chaos, the pound hit a record low against the dollar, and the Bank of England was forced to step in to prevent pension funds collapsing. Making matters even worse, trust then disappeared from public view for days, to the point that one British newspaper ran with the front page, missing, have you seen this PM? <laughs> and all this was such a fiasco, members of her own party were complaining to journalists about her. An awful lot of Tory MPs are going round and using words like reckless and madness today. Another backbench MP, I'm shell-chocked. Another senior Tory backbencher, I thought Boris Johnson's cabinet the worst in history, that one's just beaten it. This person is saying people, that's Conservative MPs, are now asking how do we get rid of her? Just um, receive that. Um, I'll, have to be, I'll have to tiptoe around this, but we're just hearing from a former Tory minister and Conservative MP saying Liz is, I can't use the word, she is, same word again. Wow! <laughs> and remember, she took office less than a month ago. The only people who experience a shorter honeymoon period than that are praying mantises. <laughs> But I'm honestly intrigued by this anchor reading her text aloud in the middle of a broadcast. I really hope she does that all the time. Uh, I just received a text here. It's from my friend Danielle. Uh, do you want to go see Bullet Train tomorrow? <laughs> Me and Peter are going. We might invite Trish, even though she's a bit of an... Oh, no, can't say that word. <laughs> Look, this has been a truly spectacular start to the Liz Truss era. She somehow managed to throw the UK market into turmoil, disappear and enrage her own party all in less than a month. It is genuinely hard to put the scale of what she just did into words. Sadly, because all the words that actually apply apparently can't be said on television. <laughs>